If you're someone who's into DeFi, NFTs, or any sort of smart contract based platform, your hardware wallet might not be enough to keep you safe. Traditional hardware wallets like a Ledger or a Trezor are primarily designed to help you secure sending and receiving funds. But once you start doing things like signing smart contracts, you all of a sudden start having to put your trust back into your wallet software. Most hardware wallets on the market force you to do what is called blind signing. That means you are having to sign and approve a transaction without being able to see what is actually in there. What this means is if you have malicious software on your PC, you might actually be signing a transaction action that will send some funds to someone else. And this is not just some theoretical risk, this has happened. So in this video, I'm just going to run through that process and show you what this looks like to sign smart contract transactions on a ledger, a trezor, as well as a keystone. And I'm also going to run through how to set up and use the smart contract verification on a keystone hardware wallet. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe and that way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. So what I've got here is a ledger, a trezor and the keystone. And I actually have all three of these devices set up with the same seed. And if you look up here, in MetaMask, I actually have three separate instances of MetaMask, one corresponding to each device. So we can actually create exactly the same transactions and see what they look like on all three. So we'll just quickly demo pancake swap. So if we just want to do a basic swap, let's say we want to swap some the BNB for cake. Let's do the same thing on all three. So by default, this is the kind of transaction data we're going to get. So we can see here that we're sending the funds from our account. And this address here is actually the PancakeSwap smart contract address. We are not sending the funds directly to this address. On the Trezor, it just tells us the smart contract. And if we tick through, we can actually see the raw hex. Not really very useful for most users. And on the ledger, uh, it actually warns us that we are blind signing and then shows us the amount uh, and the address that we are sending the funds to. It tells us the network, the fees, and that is it. Now, the thing on the keystone is if you look over here, in this case, it actually is just showing us the raw hex. And this is actually the same hex that the uh, Trezor is showing us. And the issue is that if there was some malicious data in this smart contract that we're executing, we could actually send the funds somewhere else. And the reason it's doing this is that PancakeSwap is not built directly into the Keystone firmware. And it's giving us this message down here. We can head over to the Keystone website. If we click on support, go down to decoding DeFi transactions, we can actually follow the instructions here. And this actually explains a little bit about what this is. But basically, you'll just need to be running a firmware of at least 1.3. Uh, this Keystone I've got here is running firmware 5.3, so that'll work just fine. And what we're gonna do is we want to download the latest ABI pack from their GitHub. And we'll just download that. Once we've downloaded it, we can just copy the uh, contract zip file to our micro SD card. And we will just extract here. I'm using 7-zip for that. Okay, and that's unzipped. We can see into that folder there. So if we just take that micro SD card here and just stick it straight into the keystone, if we go to load that same transaction again, we will see that this time it's actually telling us a few things that didn't tell us before. Firstly, it's telling us that this smart contract we're setting to is the PancakeSwap router v2. So it's confirming for us that we're actually sending to the correct smart contract and that we weren't on some phishing website or something like that. Secondly, if we go down here and we look at the data, it's no longer just a bunch of uh, hexadecimal stuff that's not human readable, but rather it tells us exactly what's happening. So it tells us that we're doing a swap. Uh, so it tells us the uh, method that we're calling on the smart contract. It actually tells us the amounts, it tells us the path. So, you know, this, this could change depending on what sort of swap you're doing. But most importantly, it tells us that it's coming back to our wallet address. Because if someone had tampered with your version of MetaMask, or again, you're on a malicious website, you might be doing a swap, but it might not be coming back to your wallet. It might be being sent to someone else. So that tells us this information here that we need to see. So now we can actually sign that with confidence rather than just blind signing and hoping for the best with a ledger or a trezor. 
if you're someone who just has a ledger and a trezor and they're into DeFi and don't want to spend any money, uh, I think the key takeaway as well is take the time to check that data tab in MetaMask. You know, it will protect you from a situation where you might be on a phishing website. So if you're on a sort of fake version of PancakeSwap or whatever. However, again, I need to emphasize that just checking that data tab in MetaMask in your browser will not protect you in the instance of there being either some malicious code going on in your browser or in MetaMask itself. And no amount of antivirus software will protect you from this sort of thing. Anything you see on your computer screen cannot be trusted, okay? It can be tampered with by malware. All the information that you're loading onto the micro SD card is found on the Keystone Smart Contract Data Registry. And uh, what I put on there just before was one of these releases that I downloaded. But if you want to know whether your specific smart contract platform is supported, you can actually see all the different chains and all of the different specific projects that are supported. So for example, if we go into Binance Smart Chain, we can see that it's got uh, all of these smart contracts for PancakeSwap. And uh, this one right here, ending with uh, 2.4e is the one that we are using right now. And uh, that's actually the, and you can actually see here the information that is being loaded into your Keystone uh, that is being used to verify these transactions. The other really powerful thing about the way that Keystone have done this is that if the DeFi project you are trying to use or the smart contract you're trying to interact with is not supported just in the either the firmware for this natively or in the big uh, file that you can, one of the releases that you can download, you can actually put your own smart contract information on the micro SD card and use it. For example, if we go to the crypto.com DeFi swap, we can see that while this is transaction is decoded correctly in uh, MetaMask, which is great, it is not decoded on the Keystone at all, even with all of the extra data in there on the micro SD card. So basically what we can do is we can go onto Etherscan for the smart contract address. And if we just click on the data tab and click on that there, it'll take us straight to it. So this is actually the uh, crypto.com DeFi swap smart contract. And you can actually see that this address here matches the one that we're seeing on our hardware wallets. So this is the uh, smart contract we're interacting with. We're gonna get the micro SD card. So we are on our micro SD card, the one we had before. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the contracts folder and we're gonna create a new folder called self underscore define, self define. I'm gonna go in there and look, I'm just gonna right click and say new text document. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go over to this uh, DeFi swap smart contract. I'm gonna copy the address to the clipboard and go back here into self define and I'm gonna paste the address there and then put dot J-S-O-N. Yes, we want to change that. Now I'm just gonna use Notepad++. So we're gonna start with this like this stuff here and we're gonna put it over here in Notepad++. We're gonna go back to Etherscan. We're gonna copy the address and we're gonna just stick that in the quotes there for address. Uh, we'll get the name just from here. So we'll copy that, paste that there. Okay, now for this ABI, what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down to contract ABI and we're just gonna copy that to clipboard. And I'm just gonna select those two square brackets and I'm just gonna paste the ABI straight in over the top. And there we go. So it has now put all of that ABI data in those square brackets. And now if I just hit save and stick that micro SD card in, If I go back onto the Keystone now with that micro SD card in and I scan that same transaction that I had before, you can actually see that it has pulled that information off the SD card that I just put on there. So now it's verifying that I am sending the funds to the correct address. So that's the Crow DeFi swap router. That's the name that I gave it in that file. And if we scroll down, we can actually see that it has decoded all of the information. So it has decoded that I'm doing a swap. It tells me that I'm going from ETH to whatever token that was, AVE, and it, we can confirm that it's coming back to my address. The great thing about this is because Keystone have all of this information just on their GitHub, anyone can actually contribute uh, smart contract information onto it. And this is great because it means that either the development team for a DeFi project or the community itself can help create and share uh, these smart contract definitions in a way that increases everyone's security. 
So let's just have a look at Sushi Swap. There are some gotchas with this that you need to be aware of. So I'll just quickly show you what this looks like on Sushi Swap. Sometimes you'll notice on things like the Ethereum chain, there'll be options like this where you can turn on these other sorts of uh, gas refunders and other sorts of things. And these things actually change the way that you're interacting with this DeFi platform. And I'll just show you what happens if you have that feature turned on. You can see that when we have that turned on, we're actually just signing a message. We're not actually doing a normal smart contract transaction. There's actually nothing to decode. We're actually not signing a normal Ethereum transaction. We're just signing this message. So we'll just go in and turn that off on all three. There we go. So it's the same sort of thing. In terms of adding the support to things like a ledger or a trezor, uh, it is important to say these vendors are aware that this is an issue. Ledger, for example, uh, made this article about six months ago about smart contract plugins. But the challenge there, again, is you really can't store a lot of smart contract definitions on a ledger, even a Ledger Nano X. Uh, it's just nowhere near enough space compared to the 59 megabytes that is needed to store these contracts compressed. Uh, you know, you really need an SD card to do that. The issue with these plugins is that even six months later, um, you know, there's only a couple of things that I could find plugins for, like one inch, paraswap. There's no real way to sort the apps on here and to only show plugins that I can see. Once it's installed, you can see on the ledger that if we go and do a paraswap, that when we go to review the transaction, it actually tells us that we are doing a swap. It tells us uh, how much ETH we're sending in, how much USDT we're going to receive out, uh, as well as confirming the fees and everything else. So if you're at a ledger, there is at least an option to verify some of the DeFi transactions you're going to do. But again, support that I've seen for this is not very broad. This smart contract verification was also a big feature of the uh, Grid Plus Lattice, which I noticed was also recently added into MetaMask. Uh, but the challenge with this device is it is very expensive. Either way, this is something that vendors across the board realize is an issue. So you can also just keep an eye out for uh, other sorts of improvements and uh, products that are likely to come out over the next little while. So there you go. I hope that clarified both what it even means to verify smart contracts and why it's important. Once you've got your smart contracts loaded onto the device, either in the firmware or on an SD card, it means that even if you had malicious software on your PC, a malicious version of MetaMask, or you're on a phishing website, uh, you would be able to see that and notice it when you're verifying the transaction details rather than just blind signing and hoping for the best. This functionality is available for any of the different versions of the Keystone device as long as you're running the multi-coin firmware. And if you think a Keystone would be helpful to boost your security and would like to help me out in the process, I've got an affiliate link in the description. If you have any questions about how this smart contract stuff works on any of the hardware wallets you've seen me using in any of my videos, you know, definitely just ask in the comments. And likewise, if you've had any experiences, positive or negative, trying to do this uh, with a Keystone or another device, uh, definitely would love to hear about that too. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.